On today's show, a Chinese company says it's going to build a solar-powered car. General Motors uses students to figure out how to turn a Camaro into a hybrid. And Sergio Marchion is out shopping for another car company. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for April 14th of 2015. Even though automakers are heavily pushing in-car connectivity for music, news, and entertainment, that's not what their customers want. 80% of American motorists say they prefer an AM-FM radio over everything else. According to a new survey from a company called Ipsos, 67% of American drivers say the first thing they do when they start their car is turn on the radio. And there's two reasons why they prefer AM-FM. First of all, they get all the content for free. And secondly, none of the other stuff gives them local news, weather, sports, and traffic. Even more interesting is that two-thirds of the people who do stream music in their cars are not paying for that streaming. And if they had to pay, they'd drop it in a second. So while some have predicted that automakers will get rid of over-the-air radio in the future, survey says... Don't you dare try it. Speaking of new technology in cars, what if you get in an accident, can't contact anyone, and you don't have a service like OnStar? Well, there's going to be an app for that. A company called ZenDrive just launched its accident detection services for app developers, which will use a smartphone sensors to notify police, a tow truck, and or loved ones in case of an accident. ZenDrive claims its system is very accurate in accidents over 30 miles an hour with no false positives or false negatives above that speed. But one drawback is that hard braking will not activate the accident detection. A host of other features can be incorporated into the service as well, like a roadside assistance app. ZenDrive system is available for iOS operating systems with an Android version expected to come soon. Coming up next, solar-powered cars and hybrid Camaros. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. You may remember Beijing-based Hanergy as the company that affixed its thin-film solar panels to Aston Martin's GT3 and GT4 race cars to power auxiliary systems. Now it plans to roll out five solar-powered prototype cars by the end of October. They'll have 64 square feet of thin-film solar cells covering their bodies. After four hours of charging in the sun, they'll have a range of 100 kilometers, or a little over 62 miles. However, some analysts are skeptical that Hanergy would be able to pull this off, and so are we. Remember, those solar power race cars that we see universities making are covered from head to toe in some of the most advanced panels, but they're only capable of generating enough power to run a hair dryer at full blast. So while solar panels can help recharge batteries, we doubt we're going to see them powering a car anytime soon. General Motors just teamed up again with the U.S. Department of Energy and its Advanced Vehicle Technology Competition Series to launch what they're calling EcoCar 3. 16 university teams will design, develop, and integrate powertrains into the 2016 Chevy Camaro to reduce its environmental impact. Yes, it is a cool way for students to get hands-on experience and Yes, GM is always on the lookout for new talent, but we also know GM likes university projects like this to make sure it's not overlooking anything, and this strongly suggests GM is already exploring ways to make a hybrid Camaro. Sergio Marchion keeps talking about merging with another car company, and coming up next, I'll give you my insight into his strategy. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport, and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. 
There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Is Sergio Marchion trying to orchestrate a mega merger before he retires from FCA in four years? That's what Reuters is reporting. Fiat Chrysler made amazing progress over the last five years, but it is deep in debt. It needs tons of cash. It's weak in Europe and practically non-existent in China. Last month, Marchion said a tie-up with General Motors or Ford was technically feasible. Well, here's my auto line insight. If he means a technical tie-up, where they split the cost of powertrains and platforms? That makes sense. But I can tell you, there is zero interest on the part of GM or Ford in merging with or buying FCA. I've said all along what FCA needs is a full-line partner in Europe and Asia. A merger with Peugeot would be perfect for Europe. But PSA CEO Carlos Tavares says it's too early to talk about that. Here's my translation. PSA is in the middle of its turnaround, and Tavares knows he would be in a weak bargaining position. In another year or two, he'll have a much stronger bargaining hand. So let's put that one on the back burner for the moment. In Asia, Mazda. Mazda would make a great partner for FCA, as would one of the independent Chinese automakers, such as Great Wall or Geely but FCA does not have the in-house managerial experience to manage a global partnership on this scale. So we can expect Sergio Marchion to keep talking publicly about some kind of grand deal, but it's clearly going to take some time before anything concrete actually happens. Anyway, that's how I see it, and I welcome your comments and viewpoints. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. <music>